Okay, just a quick note on the bed. I'm not going to be installing the stock Voron 0.2 bed. Instead, I'm using a pretty popular upgrade called the Kirigami bed. And this, this upgrade is, is fairly common, and it even calls it out in the manual. Um, so because of that, a lot of the steps are going to be different. Uh, in fact, you know, if you are installing the stock bed, you'll have to follow the instructions and look elsewhere. However, the steps that I'm going through to put the bed on the carriage are pretty similar, and the concepts of getting the, the carriage and the tension just right are very applicable to this. The reason that I decided to go with the Karagami bed is because I think it's a little bit more stable by design, and I, it's just something that I've been wanting to try. This is a, an upgrade that you may want to consider. So the first thing I'm going to be doing is putting heat inserts into the parts. And the way that I like to do heat inserts are taking the, the piece and looking at it, there's a smaller lip, and that lip inserts into the part, and you can just kind of set it there. And then take your soldering iron with your tip, and then you're just going to come down and press it as straight down in as possible. And you want it to be flush with the top of the part, just like that. Okay, I'm gonna flip this part over, be careful because they're kind of hot. And then I'm going to do these piece, these two as well. And these are um, these are prints of my own, so um, I went ahead and printed these in black. I may end up changing out colors at some point, but I thought it would look cool in black since the bed is black. Okay, those are pretty good. We're going to keep going. Set those in there. This piece that goes in all four of these little holes. Once again, just be careful when you're holding these because you might want to let them cool off a little bit before you do the next batch. Especially these top ones. All right, those look pretty good. And there's three on this last piece here. Okay, that looks good. And to finish off this step, go ahead and preload a square nut or a hex nut. And then uh, M3 by 6 and your rail stop. And then just go ahead and tighten that up. And there's only one on this right hand side. Okay, next up on the Kirigami bed, I'm going to take this piece here and this piece with the Voron logo and I'm going to insert it in. And then I will take a couple of M310 button heads. Basically you gotta line those up into the hole and put them in. Okay, I got this one started. You should be able to snug it up. And then just repeat on this one. Okay. Try to get that nice and centered. Now, if for some reason your screws are not threaded on this, you can go all the way through with a longer screw and then you can put like a lock nut on the side to hold them down. Next up, I'm going to use these M3x6s. I'm going to mount them to the, this piece to the bed. I don't completely tighten it until I get all four in, just in case you need to adjust it a little bit. It's helpful to use a ball joint driver on these since you're not going to be going at it necessarily at a straight angle. So I've got these screwdrivers here. If you do happen to have problems going into any of the heat sinks, you can always adjust them. Sometimes these are easy to get angled wrong. But all mine are going in pretty straight. But all you would do is take your soldering iron 
and heat over it a little bit. Okay, now they're all, now it's all in there. It looks like it's nice and flat and flush, parallel to this. So I'm gonna go ahead and tighten them all down. And that's good to go. Okay, I've got the electronics out. They came in this nice little bag. And I'm just gonna slide these Wagos in. You want them to go up this way so you can easily access it and open this. And they should be a pretty snug fit like that. Okay, those are all good. Okay, and this piece here, there's a little bit of a hole, a slot for it to slide through. So you slide it in like that, and then you're just going to put an M36 screw in here. Okay, now I'm going to flip this over, and I'm going to go ahead and attach this. This goes on the inside, like this. We're just going to line it up with these screw holes here. So you get that one in, the other one's pretty easy. Tighten this up just a little bit more. There we go, I got it nice and straight now, going in. That's a trickier screw to get in. And now I'm gonna go ahead and put in the, the little LED board here, the NeoPixel for the front. And I just need a couple of these in three by sixes. There's also a diffuser that you can put in here. Um, I don't have it printed yet, but I'm gonna come back and do that later. It's pretty much all set up. And you also have this JST cable here that they give you. And this is what's intended to be clipped into this. These, um, we're gonna go, we'll, we'll be doing the wiring later, but these here are the power connections, whether AC or DC on your bed. And then this is for the thermistor. Clip one piece to the bed, one piece to the back to the board, same thing for the power. And all of this is going to go down the Z cable chain. And of course you need to install this little guy. And your little zip tie slot is right here on towards the inside. There's that slot. That's how you know you've got a right orientation. Go ahead and put our screw through. Now I'm going to go ahead and take my cable chain end and it'll be connected just like this. I'm going to use a couple of M36s. The only other thing we have to do is connect this piece to the front. You're going to just press in some M3 hex nuts. This is one of the few places that I've seen these used in boron builds instead of heat inserts, but probably because it's thinner. And then you're just going to slide this up and in, and then go ahead and sink some M3-M36s here. Looks pretty good. Now I'm going to go ahead and connect this, but we're not going to worry about wiring, but might as well connect it so I don't lose it. And that'll just be used later when we go to run things down the chain. Now that I've got the Kirigami bed built, I'm going to install it on the rails. And this is where there's going to need to be some adjustments made. So when you ride your Kirigami bed up and down, you want to make sure there's no binding. If there is, it's possible that these rails and, and or extrusions are not perfectly parallel. Now if your rail is properly centered on your extrusion, you can really just, you should just be adjusting the... Uh, the extrusion itself to get that out. So we're going to go ahead and do that and, and I'll be using these M2 by fours uh, to go ahead and get those, get this installed. And in order to get, get this installed, I'd recommend putting a couple screws in here just to get it down. And then you can put the other ones in as you go. So in my case, I'm doing the bottom two. It's probably going to be a little hard to see on the camera here. All right, that one's in. I'm going to go ahead and do this one. Make sure they go in nice and straight. You don't want to tear up your rail when you're screwing these in. And you also don't want to strip them. Actually, mine's not too bad. I'm a little surprised. But I'm going to go ahead and sink the remaining screws. I'm also using my Permatex, and that's going to 
I think that's always a good idea when you're doing metal to metal, especially for these screws. The nice thing is about the Kirigami bed, you can come in later and tighten these up. Okay, here's another angle. You can see I've got all four screws in. If you're having problems getting your screws in, um, maybe they're off a little bit, it's possibly because you're not lined up parallel. So I was able to get mine in just fine. This feels pretty good, but there's, I think there's a little bit of room for adjustment. So I'm, what I'm gonna do is just play around with the extrusion a tiny bit. Visually, I can see that this top piece here might be over this way a little bit more. So I'm gonna, I might just move it like a millimeter over to the right or half a millimeter even. The way I'm gonna do that is come in with my driver, loosen up that joint, and then I'm just gonna let it kind of naturally glide. You can see those real steps are handy. So if you just let it naturally glide, that's the easiest way to do it. You can see it's kind of moving left and right a little bit. So I'm gonna try to find the, the ideal spot here. It's parallel when it's like this, but as I come up, you can see it moving. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna shoot right in the middle. And I'm gonna go ahead and tighten it up. Okay, yeah, that's actually really good now. So I would recommend just visually looking at it. And if you see something that looks off, that's your first clue of where to maybe adjust. And in my case, it was pretty easy. So everything seems to be moving just like I'd want it. So you want it to be able to move back and forth very quickly without having any kind of drag or resistance. This is very important. So even though this is the Kirigami bed, the stock bed will be very similar in terms of the fit. The only difference is gonna be the assembly of the, the parts. Okay, and here I'm gonna go ahead and just install an M36 for the uh, end stop. 